Hi guys, in this video we're going to be covering ionic bonding before thinking about representing ionic bonds. We'll then finish off with a summary. So, there are three types of bonding that you're going to need to be familiar with for your exam. These are metallic bonding, covalent bonding and ionic bonding. Ionic bonding is what happens when metals react with non-metals. And as the name suggests, ionic bonding involves the formation of ions, which are atoms or groups of atoms that have a charge. If you've seen our video on ions, you'll know that metals generally lose electrons in order to form positively charged ions known as cations. In the formation of an ionic bond, the metal atoms involved transfer their outer shell electrons to the non-metals. Probably the best way to think about this is to look at an example. On the left hand side here we have an atom with three electrons. Two electrons in an inner shell and one electron in the outer shell. From our work on the periodic table, we know that this atom must be overall neutrally charged and therefore if it has three electrons, it also has three protons in the nucleus. An atom of an element with three protons in the nucleus is lithium. So here we have a lithium atom. Another thing that we know about lithium is that it lies on the left hand side of the periodic table and is in group one. Lithium is therefore a metal. Using the same method of counting electrons and thinking about the position of an element in the periodic table, we can see that on the right hand side we have a chlorine atom and that chlorine is a non-metal. Therefore, for an ionic bond to form between these two atoms, the metal atom will transfer its outer shell electron to the non-metal. This outer shell electron from lithium is transferred over to the chlorine atom. And we can see the result of this in the next diagram. The lithium has lost its outer shell electron and it has been transferred over to this chlorine atom. We've kept the electron from the lithium in blue so you can easily see the transfer. The lithium atom has become a lithium ion and it's lost a negatively charged electron so therefore it will have a positive charge overall and we can also call this a cation which if you remember is just the name we use for a positively charged ion. Similarly our chlorine atom has gained a negatively charged electron and therefore has a negative charge overall. We can also call this negatively charged ion an anion. And we should also add the charges to the chemical symbols to indicate that ions have been formed. Something that you'll notice is both the metal cation and the non-metal anion now both have full outer shell. We know that a full outer shell is especially stable. So both elements have gained stability going from the atom to the ion. Additionally, we formed one positive ion and one negative ion and these oppositely charged ions will have a strong electrostatic attraction to each other. Electrostatic attraction is just what we call the name for an attraction between a positive and a negative. It's this attraction between the positive and the negative which is known as the ionic bond. So we can see that the electron transfer has led to the formation of two stable ions which are then strongly attracted to each other. For metals, forming this ion is easier to do by losing electrons, whereas for non-metals it's easier to do by gaining. So both conditions can be satisfied if a metal reacts with a non-metal. We can now think about the best way to draw out an ionic bond. And a dot and cross diagram is a great way to do this. A dot and cross diagram represents an ionic bond by using dots and crosses to represent the electrons on each atom. For example, we've got lithium and chlorine again here. But this time we've drawn the electrons on the lithium atom as crosses and the electrons on the chlorine atom as dots. What this means is when we draw the transfer of the electron from the lithium atom to the chlorine atom in order to form the ionic bond, in our drawing of the resultant ions, which we've done here, it is easy to see that one electron has been transferred from the lithium to the chlorine because you can see the cross as part of the chloride ion's electrons. The dot and cross diagram is therefore really useful to show where the electrons have come from and remind you that the transfer occurs from the metal to the non-metal. The next step is to show that an ion has been formed and we do this by placing the ion in square bracket as you can see here. The final thing to add is the charges. On the left hand side we have lost an electron from a lithium atom in order to form a cation. So this ion has an overall positive charge which we write in the top right hand corner of our ion diagram. Likewise, we should add a negative charge to our chloride ion to show that one electron has been gained. In this example, we just transferred one electron from lithium to chlorine, but this doesn't always have to be the case and more than one electron can be transferred in the formation of an ionic bond. On the left hand side, we have an atom of magnesium, which we know is magnesium because of the number of electrons, which must be equal to the number of protons for an atom. In this magnesium atom, we've shown the electrons as crosses and you can see that there are two electrons in the outer shell. 
which fits with the fact that magnesium is a group 2 metal. On the right hand side here we have an atom of oxygen and we've shown the electrons in the oxygen atom using dots. You can see from this diagram that oxygen has 6 electrons in the outer shell which fits with oxygen being a group 6 non-metal. We know that in the formation of an ionic bond there's going to be transfer from the metal over to the non-metal with the aim of both forming full stable outer shells. However, we can see in this example that for this to happen, we need to transfer not just one electron, but two electrons. And this is exactly what happens in the formation of an ionic bond between magnesium and oxygen. So let's draw that in. The resulting dot and cross diagram can be seen here, where we've added the square brackets to show that ions have been formed. The magnesium atom has lost two electrons to form the Mg2 plus cation, whereas the oxygen atom has gained two electrons to form O2 minus anion. We need to just finish our dot and cross diagram by adding these charges into the top right hand corner of the square brackets. You'll notice here that it's convention to always write the number first followed by the positive or negative sign. The use of the dot and cross diagram to represent this ionic bond has clearly shown that two electrons shown by crosses have been transferred from magnesium to oxygen and a strong ionic bond will be formed by the electrostatic attraction between positive and negative charges. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing GCC chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the stat revised smiley face and together let's make GCSE chemistry a walk in the park.